Good day and thank you for joining CivilNet. As a lot of our viewers know, uh, and we hope more will know and be updated on the situation in Armenia, what happened is that on the 17th of July, a critical situation started developing in Armenia where a group of armed men, who are now known as the Sasnazarer group, um, took over uh, the Yerebuni police station. They are keeping hostages and they have very clear uh, requests or demands rather that President Sarkisian and his regime resign, that all political prisoners in Armenia be set free, in especially Jirar Sefilian, whose name has been on the forefront of conversations here. The situation is developing ever since. We saw that public is consolidated. The tension was at its peak yesterday around the Erebuni police station, where there was a violent confrontation between the police forces and the people. Uh, we are following the situation currently it's calm starting this morning when after at around 5:30 in the morning everyone on the Khorinati street was arrested we have news that 136 people have been detained today only we are discussing the situation from several angles and today my guest at the studio is Mr. Ruben Karabetian, a diplomat, uh, ambassador, Armenia's ambassador to Egypt and Italy, professor of history as well. Thank you for being here, uh, Mr. Karabetian, and uh, your evaluation of this situation and what's the political agenda on both sides? Uh, thank you for inviting me, first of all. the. If we speak about it, it's an unprecedented situation for Armenia and I think uh, the agenda is clear. It's uh, always already announced by the group that they want a constitutional change. They want to, uh, the president to resign eventually. So uh, they try what they are doing, trying to do is to change the political agenda of the country which, uh, but if we, you know, if we speak now about the demands, uh, someone from outside will uh, not be able to understand uh, what is going on in Armenia if we are not uh, deal and or we are took out the events which is happening in Yerevan uh, out of its context uh, internally and uh, 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 from outside. Internal context uh, was that we all very well know that Armenia is in a is in a extremely uh, difficult economic situation, is uh, extreme poverty, uh, it's uh, an authoritarian semi-authoritarian regime. It's according to the uh, Freedom House uh, Index of Democracy of 2016. We are we have snow uh, balling. Uh, uh, foreign debt and uh, uh, the ever-expanding immigration and not stoppable immigration which uh, is one of the number one our um, security issues, yeah. issues of, uh, of uh, security of, of our nation so uh, the together all of this it's uh, the situation exacerbated by the April war which uh, brought uh, much more uh, feeling of insecurity and instability in the society. When Armenia uh, faced uh, unprecedented four days war with uh, unexpected somehow results and uh, death of hundreds of its uh, youths, soldiers. soldiers, which uh, was like a shocking to the nation. And uh, in this context, uh, the uh, steps that were taken by the government and the leaders uh, were, were not adequate. Uh, instead of uh, trying to, to present the picture, they uh, give uh, different messages to the society, sometimes uh, very dangerous messages. Uh, for example, they uh, first we didn't have the picture if it is uh, what has happened there. And there also the foreign, foreign diplomats were told completely different numbers and, and the outcome of the war first. Second, uh, when they started to speak about needs of uh, compromises 
what kind of compromises. Uh, we all know that what kind of a package is on the table. So uh, we felt and the, and the nation felt that uh, the leadership is going uh, to uh, give up uh, the, the territories that uh, adjacent to the Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, crucial for, for the security. So that uh, putting Armenian nation uh, uh, before the, the behind can the we, choice. Can we generally say that the people finally fe felt that they have they don't have a say in whatever is going on in Nagorno-Karabakh, or they don't even have a voice here when they cannot elect their own leaders? Is is this at the at the very base of uh, absolutely the, the internal political issues? Um, together with the, with the economy, the, the, the impossibility of, um, of having no legitimate possibility to, to elect a legitimate uh, government, uh, government yeah. uh, for many, many years. Uh, so this is, they, this is like, like uh, how to say, uh, uh, a last resort for the people uh, to try to change something in the country. And the situation of the April, because the people very well known, the people are now who made this operation, those who fought the war in Nagorno-Karabakh. And that's why the events of April just facilitated and they make possible, you know, this uh, uprising or, or a military revolt or whatever you can say, a local revolt. That's another question I, I wanted to ask you. What is this? It's been called a lot of things, a military coup, uh, um, terrorism, a last desperate attempt. Uh, it's been labeled as many things. What's, uh, what's your opinion on what it is actually and what it should be called? You know, it's absolutely one part of, of the nation. Even those who openly sometimes criticize and say opposes the, the methods, uh, the tactics that they... Of the group. Uh, of the group. Uh, but deep inside in their hearts and in their souls, they are uh, sympathize them. And uh, I have no, no doubts on that. Uh, because uh, the people needs change. The people understand that in this situation, country can no, we, we are not able to continue this way. So something should have been done. But there are no hopes for a possibility to change it by a constitutional, by a peaceful, legal waves through the elections. Because we have seen 2013 elections and uh, that the people we have some other results and uh, the other thing well, my uh, my evaluation is that uh, it is uh, an uprising of a people uh, who tried uh, to change it's it's reminded me 1988 when uh, an old army soviet armenia and when the issue of nagorno karabakh came up and the, the people went to the streets and wanted uh, wanted a uh, just uh, solution Sorry, to the and but in the in deep in the essence of the issue was uh, was uh, a creation of a new armenia new independent well, armenia uh, and now it's a new and old are fighting there are also parallels between what's happening now and between uh, when Levon Del Bedrosian, Ar Armenia's first president, resigned. The situation was somewhat si similar. There were talks of territorial um, losses to Azerbaijan or negotiation, negotiating uh, you know, territories for uh, safety of the Nagorno-Karabakh people. There, there were protests and uh, Levon Del Bedrosian resigned. The situation is very in, in many ways very similar, at least on the surface. What is the actual difference of what happened then and what might happen now? Uh, the difference is uh, that the society is different. Uh, the governing elite is somehow different. And uh, the people who could oppose inside the, the ruling elite are not the same. So uh, there are no uh, strong possibility of strong voices from inside saying that, look guys, we, have, we are facing a real security threat. We are in an unprecedented situation. And when uh, the, the leader is returning back from, uh, from a Warsaw summit and saying that the status quo 
is possible to change if the uh, um, self-independence, uh, yeah, their principle yes. could be met, the realization of self-determination principle could be, uh, 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 how to say, promised, yes. acknowledged, uh, what we are saying then you understand that we don't have, that the people, the leadership is ready to change the status quo, he is ready for uh, uh, changing that without any real Gain. guarantees okay. and the main solving a key issue which is the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. You know, if if we However, diplomatically, the issue of so this creates this creates. I think sorry, sorry to interrupt you. And this is this is I think was the the final drop, uh, for uh, for the and um, everyone is saying that you know the Girard Sefilians uh, detention and you know illegal detention because we don't see any any obvious reasons and the legal procedural. There are so many questions on that. But uh, I will tell. Uh, knowing some of these people also there on the ground, uh, the organizers of the operation, I could say that uh, I think this, the more is related with the problem of Nagorno-Karabakh and, and uh, their fight those years and this kind of a piece of weak that the current government is trying to provide, not the piece of brave. Yes. Uh However, as uh, if we read in, in between the lines, we see that Nagorno-Karabakh clearly at the base of this this action. Also, another thing that puzzles me is that Girard Sefilian has been detained detain, uh, detained for two months awaiting trial. So why take this action now when you can wait for another uh, two months? Actually, at that point, one month had passed already for a month and see what's actually happening with Girard Sefilian. Why didn't they wait so long? Uh, is this, again, indicative of nagorno -Karabakh? is that it's why there was the urgency to act Abs now absolutely absolutely this is uh, when I say uh, the political agenda uh, that means completely different agenda that uh, currently we are facing uh, if uh, there will be one-sided uh, concessions on uh, that is expected from from the leadership I don't know how it could be but there are talks you know the situation exacerbated by the non-speaking uh, of, the, of the leader. Look, we have five days of, an, of, a cata of, uh, of a situation which is unbelievable. No one is speaking from, from uh, the leaders, no president, uh, neither uh, uh, prime minister spoke only today, uh, only today uh, because, because of the government session was, uh, was appointed this day. Uh, so uh, Again, this is a situation we that we are facing no uh, power, no authority situation in, in the country. And this has, this has exacerbated the situation. Um, we, uh, there's talk that the opposition or the, the civilians have no leaders. Can we say that's a, approximately the situation with the authorities? Because well, from what we see, we're dealing with the police force, but we're not dealing with the government or the parliament. Uh, you mean? In, uh, I, I mean, in the context of the people versus the regime. However, we don't see the regime. We only see the police force to this at this point, five days on. And this is, you, you mentioned a very right point. And I would like to emphasize that today there are attempts from, from unknown or, or known sites to uh, divert the, the conflict uh, between and to make it a conflict between the people and the police. I want to make it clear we are one nation and the police is also our sons and, and, and daughters. So there is not this kind of, a, uh, and this is very, very, especially this is very dangerous message that and, the, and dangerous attempts that are trying to do and recently last night was maybe the culmination of that attempts that they are trying to present in this way and it's reminded also me the situation on the pallet when I saw the, the stones uh, throwing on the policemen I saw it's, it's reminded me the picture from the West Bank or Gaza yes. 
you know. And uh, we should not bring the country to the situation of, 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 of that, that kind of, uh, uh, how to say, um, Aggressive conflict. Aggressive conflict. Conflict within the society. This is a very short step towards the civil uh, civil war, and this is the, 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 this is not an Armenian way. Uh, it's you were not saying our something way. earlier in a conversation before the interview that what's the number of police forces, uh, security forces in Armenia, and including their families, what's the number of people that are going to be uh, on opposite sides of uh, of the barracks if if things escalate, but I I think uh, and my call will be to the to the authorities to the government to refrain from continuing this uh, path of of uh, putting uh, two parts of the nation uh, against each other. This is a very wrong way to do it, and to make the police as the main responsible part of the authorities to, to do that, to solve this issue. This could lead, because we have a lot of people, you know, the, the, the internal police during all these years, it's, it's became a huge in, in its numbers. Uh, when at the beginning of independence, when we have some, and even in the Soviet Union, we have some 3,000 uh, uh, forces. I'm, I'm talking about the internal police forces. Uh, now we have currently 25,000. You understand that this is a huge number in a country where year by year becoming decreasing has, has a decreasing numbers, decreasing uh, numbers, a huge a emigration, and you know just to keep this is this is a very dangerous, especially for Armenia. So this scenario we should exclude, absolutely. Um, uh, Mr. Garabedian. We always talk of the Armenian opposition, and I'm addressing you, you this question knowing that you are a member of uh, an opposition, newly established Unity Party. We always talk of the uh, opposition's problem in Armenia being that there is no actual consolidation between op opposition political parties or movements. Isn't this the right opportunity for the opposition to unite and act unitedly? Why isn't it being uh, used or what seems to be uh, the problem? Rubin, I will tell you that uh, we are, we created a unity party uh, with, with some the people who want uh, who and, and who uh, are capable to carry out the changes in the country with a huge uh, professional experience with a with a great knowledge of, of a state building we need we need to emphasize that uh, it is uh, it is a party that uh, tries to bring changes we don't want to go on in, on the path that all the other parties you know in Armenia we have uh, more than 70 parties, but uh, it is not a one-man party. It is a great team that is working in uh, and they uh, building uh, uh, foundations of uh, of a new vision of Armenia. How we 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 see the changes and and uh, what kind of changes. Uh, but uh, you say that uh, the people we have a political uh, field. Uh, which is uh, very fragmented, uh, very ununited, and it's extremely difficult to consolidate uh, the nation around the political parties because of subjective and objective reasons. Uh, because all these years, uh, the political uh, field of activities in, in Armenia uh, uh, completely devastated. Uh, I rephrase my question because uh, I've seen a lot of statements by many political parties which are basically saying the same thing. And I wonder why there isn't a united front of opposition, political opposition in this case, where you're basically saying the, the, will, the same ideas in different words. Uh, uh, Rubina, I will, I will tell you one thing only. Uh, the real opposition or the real party, political party, uh, will be uh, how to say, evaluate it by its uh, actions and the results of its works, how it is dedicated and how continuously it keeps its promises. 
we will not try to give that kind of promises that will be unrealistic. So we put a very realistic agenda. We understand that we need a change, but these changes could occur only in case that we will uh, have the consolidation of the biggest part of the political spectrum in the, in the country and recovering this internal trust between uh, the people, between not only existing political parties within opposition, but also between the people and the opposition parties. This is a joint task that if we have opposition or if we will have an opposition sometimes in the future or a real political parties, they will prove and they will acclaim and they should uh, behave in a way to gain this trust of the people. To gain the trust, you need, you need to be with the people, for the people and for them. You, know, you need to lead them to the place that they have never been. So we know this place, to bring, how to bring these people to the place that they have never been. And we have this vision of Armenia by real projects and by the real work we started. And I will say, even in this situation, uh, the Unity Party was the first to, uh, in this announce, saying that calling to all parties to join the efforts, to create the group, to going to start to negotiate. Because we have a, a very uh, critical situation now. Uh, authorities and the, uh, the uh, people, the organizers of, of the appraisal, they need to speak, but they are not speaking. You don't have this kind of, a, and the mediator between it. Because no one trusts nobody. And this is uh, a way to nowhere. Uh, and one last question. You just say in the future, in the future, and the nearest future that comes to my mind is 2017 elections. Uh, is what's happening now in Armenia in any way instrumental for what will happen in 2017? Is there going to be, even if there's not a, cha a regime change, is there going to be a shift of force, balance? Do you, you see there's an opportunity for if that? You understand, if you, if you uh, ask my personal opinion out of any political context or as a, as a historian, I don't believe that we will reach uh, in this situation uh, to the April elections. I'm very sincere. Uh, because we don't have these, neither the authorities, the political capital needed, and the resources, all kind of resources, and not the people. We are facing a situation where uh, everyone, every citizen of the country, should take a stand for its, its country. It is, it is like, uh, I reminded that 1890, 88, that we need a position. We need a position of all our citizens. We understand that we are on a dangerous crossroad. And for me, it's the most important thing that we are not falling into the chaos because the situation could bring this kind of a chaotic development to Armenia. We see what is happening on our uh, borders. You know, anything is happening far away, I'm not saying is uh, Armenia is a part of a global world, uh, of a huge world. But whatever is happening now I mean, in Syria, very and what is, could happen in Turkey, what could happen in our immediate neighborhood, it could affect immediately Armenia. And the situation when Armenia is in chaos, Armenia is marred in, a, in, a, in a, some civil uh, strife uh, between uh, the parts of its nation, will make us uh, not even weaker, but uh, uh, will uh, raise uh, very, very big, big uh, questions on that, on, on our future. But I'm, I'm very optimistic. We, we need to do anything to stop uh, these kind of developments. Thank you for, very uh, much, Mr. Garabetian. Uh, I remind you, we're just speaking uh, with Ruben Garabetian. And if, t just to retaliate your last words, is that any, Armenia is very sensitive to any regional developments, which are many uh, on our borders and close to us. And any chaotic situation in Armenia could uh, put a question mark on Armenia's future.